Yeah, and then Ramsey came over and said that he had caught in a brook trout, and so I pulled up my tungsten and dropped a leech flutter spoon, and wasn't very long, and I saw Mark go dashing down the graph, and or the flasher, and bam, I caught my first brook trout, so that was Looked pretty right cool. Into one, huh? Yeah. All right, well, welcome to episode number nine of the Midwest Angler Podcast. I'm Matt Deitch, joined, as always, by Scott Sturman. Yeah, it was a great time out there at the Black Hills this past weekend, wasn't it? Very good. Battled the weather a little bit with some wind and some snow, but otherwise, yeah, really good time. Yeah, it was kind of funny going out there, and they said it was going to be windy. And we, you know, us being from flat country here, thought, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Up in the mountains, It's their wind is probably like a 10-mile-an-hour wind here. But, yeah, it's windy up there, too. Yeah, it was windy. Yeah, I, well, the first night we got up there, you know, we went to Deerfield. Yep. Yep, uh, in on the Gold Rush, Gold Rush Run, or Gold Rush Access, I think is what it was called, and yeah, we met some people in the parking lot, and they kind of were laughing at us that we didn't have a four-wheeler, he had a side-by-side, and he said, well, you guys hook your shacks up to the back of my side-by-side, and I'll haul you in, and I wasn't thinking it was going to be any problem, but boy, that walk out when we had to hoof it and pull the pull the sleds i was sure glad that we got it right out yeah, same same here i was sweating yeah that was bad so a big shout out to that guy where was he from custer did he say yeah, he, was he said from? he was from custer. custer well we're gonna give him a big shout out we didn't get his name but we really appreciate him doing that for us and kind of looking out for us out on the ice too kind of one of my favorite memories from that is him telling us not to throw any fish out onto the ice when he first said that to us i was like I, I thought that he meant, like, don't throw your fish out on the ice and leave them and, yeah. you know, head back to the truck. Or and don't, like, if, you know, sometimes people catch small ones and throw them out there and right. leave. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking he was saying. It's like, no, you know, we're not that, you know, we're yeah, not we're those not type gonna, of people yeah, or whatever. We're not going to fish lay on the no, ice. No, because of the eagles. Yeah, the eagles will come down and grab them if you leave them out on the ice. Yeah, and, yeah, there was an eagle up in the tree next to us all night, all yeah. evening, and, yeah, he... He a lot was, of the times he was sitting about 20 yards away from those guys on the ice just watching them, like, waiting, like, hey, throw me a perch. Yeah, I don't know if they threw a chub out for him or, or what, but, yeah, he, he was it's definitely like keying in on them. their pet bald eagle. <laughs> I really thought we had those frozen chubs. I thought about setting one on your shack or Ramsey's shack and watching that big old sucker come and land right on top of it and hear what you guys' reaction oh, would have been. Oh, I can only imagine Ramsey screaming <laughs> with an eagle on top of his shack. <laughs> it's bad enough just yeah. the, normally so yeah you know it was it was a great time out there caught a lot of perch a lot of perch deer field. a lot of perch biggest ones were probably about nine inches yeah went going into it we had said that we were only going to keep ones over nine and yeah i i dare say between the four of us we caught well over a hundred perch i think easily i uh, think that we'd be surprised at how many perch we actually caught you know you you catch three or four five at a time it adds up in a day oh, yeah. of fishing. Oh, yeah. And what did we go home with? Four? Five? Something like that. Yeah. But and then you caught that one nice rainbow. Well, you caught more than one nice rainbow, but you came home with one nice rainbow. Yep. Yep. I'd never eaten trout, so I thought, well, I'm I'm going to try this. and it Might as well. Yep. And that one was what, 15 inches? Yeah, 15, 15, 15 and a half inches. And then you caught what, three of them? Three rainbows that day? Yep. Three, three rainbows. I had one get off at the hole. But I I would say the other two were the other two that I actually got out were right in there, give or take an inch. Similar size. And then we also caught some brook trout. Yep. Pretty. Oh, oh man, man, those things cool. are pretty. I didn't fish. realize they had that much pink in them as they did those little pink spots. Yep. Yep, that was really cool. It was really fun watching them on the on the flasher too because when they would come, you know the difference between a perch or a trout. Oh yeah. When all the perch, you know, were pulled off the bottom. Yep, you know, they would just kind of jig a foot off the bottom, and yep, just just like the perch around here. Yep. And all of a sudden, you'd think it was interference, and you'd show a mark up, you know, five foot below the ice. Just the way those things torpedoed down, and yeah. and I mean, there was no hesitation. It you didn't have me, to raise your bait up because no, no, it reminded me kind of. I mean. The closest thing I can think of is a yellow bass. Yeah. Just the ferociousness and mm -hmm. yeah, I I don't know if 
if stunt people were fish, they would be drought. <laughs> just, and then, yeah, just when you get wild. Them, when you get them on, they are just all over the place too. Yeah, when I when I hooked that first rainbow, you know, obviously immediately you knew it was a bigger fish, and it was going crazy. And yeah, it, that that was fun. I'd I'd do anything to go and do that again. Yeah, you got some good pictures with it too. Yeah. Yep. That was that was one thing that I really going into that trip more than more than keeping fish fillets more than anything i wanted good pictures you know knowing the mountains in the background yeah. and the pine trees and being in a place catching fish that we had never caught before that was something that i really wanted to do was get good pictures and and we did we got good you, pictures you took some really nice ones so did you know ramsey had a yep had some good ones it's it's always hard to slow yourself down we've talked about that and take good quality ones and especially on the the days like we had out there where it's like real windy and sometimes all you want to do is just pull the shack up over top of you and kind of hunker down in that wind because there was a few times when those gusts would come up, especially on Sunday on Pactola where it was hold on. You thought you were going with the shack, going for a ride. Right. The thing on Deerfield was at least there was enough snow cover that you could kind of burrow your yep. sled of your shack down in there. There wasn't the snow cover on Pactola and it would either push your shack around or a couple times i think all of us had our shacks tip over yeah, as we were times, out yeah. you know trying to hole hop and jig for lake trout you know oh well, there goes the shack and <laughs> you just wonder what fell down the hole yeah well, i had it a couple times i was like oh i had a couple things sitting on my seat please say yep. they didn't go down the hole i think another thing that surprised us was the ice thickness out there oh gosh un unbelievable i i didn't think it was going to be that thick yeah, going into it, we decided not to bring the four-wheeler just because we thought, well, you know, driving across the state of South Dakota with a light trailer or, or a heavier trailer will save some gas mileage by not bringing the four-wheeler. I was thinking that most of these lakes weren't going to be thick enough ice to even bring a four-wheeler. We were dead wrong. Yeah, so they said that there were some people driving out yeah, on some of yeah, the lakes. Yeah, I would say... I don't think we ever hit ice under 10 inches. Mm, I don't think so either. No, we, we would have been real good with a four-wheeler. but And then, like you said, Deerfield had a lot of snow on it. Yep. That walkout, like, yeah. I think we were all huffing and puffing and sweating by the time we got back to the trailer. That was a mess. Well, and then Ramsey was way off kind of on his own, so I had to walk a ways to yelling at him and, I don't know, wasted a bunch of energy that way. And yeah, we <laughs> I was, I was we falling left him. behind. We could have, we could have. Him uh, and the eagle. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we're not that. I think <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that a federal crime? That's probably a federal <laughs> crime, isn't it? Uh, you can't do that stuff to eagles. Yeah, got to eat at the Alpine Inn. Oh, the Alpine Inn. If you've never eaten at the Alpine Inn out there, you have got to go. My first time was with you guys last summer when we went ATV and out there and, who, yeah, you know, downtown Hill City. Uh, you can't miss it. Old, old building there, right on a corner, big front porch on it. And what you see is what you get there. It, 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 it's a fancier, I mean, the inside is, you know, maybe a little bit of a fancier, but if you wear jeans and a t-shirt there, you don't feel out of place. Well, that, I had, I had windbreaker pants on and a hooded sweatshirt. <laughs> right. But they got two things on their menu, the big filet mignon and the little filet mignon. Yep. You you get to pick how you want them to cook it, but beyond that, that's it. You get a baked potato, lettuce wedge, ranch dressing, and some toast. And some toast. And some that's that's what toast. you get. And, and oh, it's worth it. And oh, it's yeah. cheap. Thirteen dollars for yeah. a large like ten ounce filet mignon. Yeah, right? a bacon wrap filet mignon. Yeah. That. If you go in the summer, show up early because you're going to sit there for a while. Yeah, last summer we had to sit there and wait for about an hour. Yep. But I mean, everyone. I think that's the highlight of hill city you know everyone knows the alpine inn oh it's if, great if you're food. gonna eat in hill city that's where you go and great service the oh, waitress, yeah. waitress is off awesome she sat there and showed us deer pictures mountain lions yep that she, she was shot. she was a mountain lion hunter and her kids shot big deer yep big deer and big ones caught big fish it was that was that was a good night yeah it's always it's always fun going to that place and just like you said, the atmosphere of the whole Hill City thing. Our cabin was our cabin was nice. Yeah, what was where was that called again? What was Camp, that called? Campfire Cabins, and 
uh, right down by Pactola. Uh, small cabin, but it had everything you needed. I think it was 360 square feet. It was their nice little cabin. Yeah, They're only all, a couple years old. Yep, we all had a bed. The bathroom was nice and big. Great people. Yep, kitchen. Yeah, the owners came down and talked to us. They were they were very nice people. And yeah, if I if I'm back out there again, I'll, I'll definitely yeah, try to stay there. Are they one of the few places that kind of stays open year round? You know, we booked it off vrbo.com, and there there was a number of places out there yet. I know, like, in Hill City, I think only the Super 8 Motel stays open. Okay. But, you know, just the fact that we, you know, wanted to fry fish one of the nights, you know, needed some space to come in and charge up Vexlars and everything. Cabin, when you are when you have four people, a cabin is the better way to go instead yeah. of getting two hotel rooms. And, yeah, well, it was. We uh, stayed at a hotel up at Arlington last year. Great hotel, but with that, four guys in it, I mean. Eric had a sleep, Eric and Ramsey slept on the floor. Right. That's when when you when each person can get a bed and you know it, it's one thing if yeah we're going to pull in stay the night whatever one night but two nights and and whoever gets the bed always kind of feels guilty. I mean Ramsey is going to get the floor. There's no uh, yeah. no negotiation with that. He got the, he got the high bed upstairs. He did. In the loft. Eric and I got the low ones on the ground. He got the air mattress, the tall air mattress. Well, that's, that's He's, better than what he deserved. Yeah. We probably should have put him in the corner, so if he he only had one way to roll off the bed, but we put him <laughs> in the middle, and it was kind of a fear for Eric and I. Yeah. He had the nightlight right above his <laughs> right above his bed, so he was okay. You know, He didn't wake up screaming too much. <laughs> but, yeah, so then sun, Sunday morning, we or Saturday morning, we were out there Friday, Saturday, Came home Sunday. Saturday morning, we got up, headed to Pactola. That was that scenery. I mean, Deerfield was cool, but Pactola was really neat. Big, tall mountains. Just the as rock, far as Black Hills, the rock walls. Yep, yep, the rock walls, and just amazing that you could drill holes ten yards away from the shore and be in forty-five foot of water. Yep. Uh, that was well that one time we drilled right next to the wall and it was like 15 feet yep yeah you you could drive your pontoon right up to the yeah right up to the walls and i think they've got a problem with a lot of people cliff jumping out there i can believe that mm. what are we we went in on which, jenny gulch jenny gulch that's right yep, jenny we gulch. were up on jenny gulch and then we once we got onto the lake then we started heading down towards the main basin and uh, found a big rock wall that Craig Oiler had kind of told us to fish around and found some little bays in there with some shallower flats. And yeah, where we could kind of try to get away from the wind a little bit. Yep. We tried putting tip-ups up, but blowing snow, they were blowing the hole shut, tripping yeah. the flags. It didn't it, work. No. Nah. So that made it tough to really put out a lot of lines and try for the lake trout and some of the big pike that are in there. I think most of us jigged for quite a while trying to get one yep marked a few but yeah. they're pretty negative but talking to other people it seemed like it wasn't a real good lake trout bite yep. that day yeah whether it be the pressure or what but yeah. yeah some something was off and and that's fine whatever we we got out there we saw what we saw and i mean it was great and, and then we ended up going up and fishing in one of those bays mm -hmm. on in the shallower water i think we were in i don't know 10 foot of water and I fished in about five at one point. Did you? Up mm -hmm. in that little nook? Yep. Trying for bluegills. Yep. And, and we got bluegills. Yeah, we got enough. We had a nice fish fry on Saturday yeah, night. That ooh, was a lot of fun. God dang it, that was good. They tasted really good. Fried fish and brats. That's That was the supper of champions. <laughs> That's, we were bachelor living back on, <laughs> that, that was on good. this trip. That was good. I, I could do that. When your side week. dish is fried fish <laughs> or brats, however yep. way you want it, the fish were the main dish. Yep. That was good. That was you, good. You mentioned Craig Euler. I, I think that we need to give Craig a huge shout out. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, he. Uh, I had messaged him here a, a few weeks back and told well, him we, that it started all the way back to the Iced Institute, Ice Institute in up Sioux in Falls. Sioux Falls yep. in November. And you know, Craig Craig did a seminar out there that we went in and listened to, and really kind of tried to sell the Black Hills. You know talking about how 
there's not that many people out there fishing these bodies of water and how good the fishing is. And, you know, with my love for the Black Hills and my love for ice fishing, it was kind of a no-brainer for me, you know, yeah. hey, guys, let's do it. And lucky for me, you know, you, Ramsey, and Eric both said, yeah, let's do it. And, and so we did. So I had messaged him a couple weeks prior after talking to him there at the Ice Institute and, and kind of told him that, that we were going to be coming out. Not that we checked his schedule or anything. You know, this is what worked for us, and so that's what we kind of had to do. But, yeah, he he definitely talked to him on the phone there after we had stopped in Rapid coming in on Friday, and he kind of gave us some pointers out there on Deerfield, told us where, where he thought the best spot for us to go was, and, and that's where we went. And, and right like he said, you know, you're going to catch perch there. That's what we did, and yeah. and yeah. Then again, on Pactola on Saturday, told us this rock wall to to kind of work. Same spot that he had brought Jason Mitchell for a TV show, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, that was always but, neat. Uh, That's neat. Yeah, you know, I mean, that day it just wasn't meant to be, and you know, we we tried. We I I know we had the right baits. We had you know we had the right stuff. Oh, it we just, were around. Like we said, we marked fish. Yep, it just wasn't meant to be. But no, I was happy with catching bluegills and. I mean, of course, I'm happy with catching bluegills. That's that's my thing. But, yeah, no, of course we would have liked to have caught, like, trout. But I don't think any of us went away from there thinking that we were a loser, you know, for not. Oh, definitely not. No. You, you know what no, I we mean. We gave it you a shot. I mean, we, it's right. not, it wasn't for lack of trying. Right. I would have been disappointed if we didn't try. Right. If, if we just settled on that we are catching, you know, bluegills and perch and it's, we're just like, okay, we're just going to keep doing this because we know we can do it. Right. But we were like, okay, let's, let's drill a string of holes here. Let's put, let's really get after it here and see if one of us can catch one of these. Yeah. It would have been nice if we could have stayed one more day because Sunday yeah. we woke up and yeah, left rapid and it was 54 degree. degrees. Yeah. That would have been the nice day to be out there. Yeah. And it wasn't, it didn't seem as windy. No, right. One, you and, know, that, and that hurt us for hole hopping too, as far as the lake trout goes. We couldn't get out there and do a lot of hole hopping just because of the fact that it was 35 mile per hour gusts, 40 mile per hour gusts that time. Yep. And, and like we explained earlier, you know, our shacks are blowing away, our shack, shacks are tipping over, you know. If you can drill 30 holes, and, and it wasn't for lack of drilling holes. No, we drilled a lot of drill, I, That's holy. the most holes I've drilled on, uh, out on a day fishing, I can say that much. I know when Eric started off, I think I think he went right off and drilled 25 holes. And, yeah. you know, I, I'd say you were close there working the other side of that rock cliff. And, you know, it constantly after that, every time we decided to move, it was, you know, 10 holes here, 10 holes yeah. there, and... Yeah, uh, we we easily drilled well over eighty holes, but yeah, uh, we like gave I said, it a shot. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be. So and then at the end of the night, uh, Craig was nice enough to haul all of our stuff off the ice for us, yeah, including his, us. Yep, him and his buddy Brian came and talked with us for a little while, and and yeah, they said, well, you want you need a lift back to the deal. And after the night before, <laughs> I was I was. Uh, the one thing about Pactola is it didn't have near the amount of snow that right. Deerfield did. No, nope, but and it had a nice path where a lot of people had went out onto. Right. Again, there we got a lot of cool pictures of the sunrise oh, yeah. in the snow with us walking out there. Yep. No, it 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 was it was an awesome trip. Like you know, we had talked before. You know, obviously it was all of our bucket list deal to catch a lake trout, and that did not happen. But it just you know, gives us an excuse to have to go out there again. Well, and that's, you know, we, we've talked about this before. If every single time you ever went fishing, you just knocked them out of the park. Fishing would be cool for the first three weeks, and then after that, you kind of get boring. You know, you got to have days like that with the not-so-nice weather, with not catching the fish that you're really after but to, make did, your, to make you really appreciate yeah, the good days. It, and it made us appreciate the fish that we did catch because we did, like you said earlier, we did catch a lot of fish. Oh, yeah. And, you know, going into that too, you know, right under the lake trout was just catching a trout period. And, yeah, yeah. I, I caught a few trout and, you know, yeah, good. a couple brooks. Yeah. And, yeah, when Ramsey had run over to me and said, 
hey, I just caught a brook trout. I was like, oh man, you know, I was, I was disappointed that he had caught one and I hadn't caught one yet. <laughs> it was shortly thereafter that, that I switched from a small tungsten, uh, jig to a leech flutter spoon that, yeah, it, it, that's when it started to happen. I think we all, Eric and you a dollar yet. Because I thought we had our bet going, the first fish was a dollar, and then the biggest fish was a dollar. Well, I, th I thought about that Eric, the other day. Eric I'm, caught the first one on Deerfield, and then you caught the big rainbow. Yep. I I don't think any of the rest of us had even pulled a rod out of the rod locker, and Eric had a perch up out of there. Yeah. I, well, I, I was still drilling holes, I know that. Yeah, so we, you know, fishing out there, as far as that goes, we fished in anywhere from five foot of water, like we said all the way out to like 45, almost 50 foot of water at yep. times. And I think we could have caught the bluegills. It seemed like you had to find the weeds. Yep. If I don't know if you noticed that or not, but if there was taller weeds, it seemed like I caught more bluegills around the taller weeds than I did the, the shorter ones in yep. the shallower water. Yeah, Eric, Eric was the first one to kind of get on those bluegills. He got on a good pattern. Yep. I was kind of jigging up by that cliff, and, and he went off. And then, yeah, I think he had either Snapchatted me or texted me and said that he had caught a couple bluegills, and I wasn't going to turn that down. Well, so and we wanted some fish for a fish fry. Right. That's kind of yep. a goal. Yep, exactly. And so, yeah, I, I followed him over there, and then you and Ramsey came over, and, yeah, I think we got 22 of them by the end of the day. And that yeah. was. And it seemed like with those, for me anyways – if you marked them, you were going to catch them. It seemed they were like very aggressive. Aside from, you know, the potential lake trout or whatever, when we were jigging in the deep water, I really felt like all the fish out there. It just if you marked them, you were going to catch them. Yeah, you had a great opportunity to. Yeah, you know, you might miss, you know, you might miss a hook set, but they all the fish out there were pretty aggressive. The bluegills you might have to work a little bit harder than the perch and the rainbow or the yeah, trout. Yeah, a few but, lookers every once in a while. Yep. Yeah. What did you use for for uh, jigs and bait out there? I had a gold thirteen duggy. Okay. Jig on with a wax worm with okay. one wax worm on it. That seemed to be what worked best for me. That was what the perch. The perch too. Yep. Yep. The perch and the blue. And then also. Um, a cast an orange gold glow an orange tiger glow gold um cast master a smaller one of those with a couple wax worms on that seemed to be working pretty well for the perch okay at least and i caught a couple bluegills on that as well at pactola okay so that's what was working for me what i mean i obviously asked you right away if you were catching them on the black check eye jig but you switched it up you, you want to know you, something? You came in with a knuckleball. I was expecting a straight heater right down the middle by Scott Sturman, and he comes in here throwing me a knuckleball and buckled my knees a little bit in the batter's box. You want to know something, Matt? I did not use my my rod here, the rod that I use for everything. I did not use this rod one time, and I never once dropped a black check I jig down the hole. I've I've got wow. this. I've got the white noise, a 19-inch ultralight white noise. This is my rod. This, like, I I feel so confident with that rod. It's just, it, it's crazy. But I've also got this same exact rod with a 13 Freefall Ghost reel yep. on it, and I had that already with a gold check eye jig on it. And Euler had said that he liked to use gold, so it was like, well, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to bite two jigs off and, and retie. So that's what I used. And, yeah, it was a, a three-and-a-half, four-millimeter uh, custom jigs and spins, check-eye jig in gold with one wax worm on it. That's what I caught all my perch on and the bluegills the next day. And then as far as the trout, uh, this 13-inch Wicked Ice with a small leech flutter spoon from clam tackle uh gold with the red dots that's what i caught all my trout on and then i ended up catching a couple perch and the rock bass oh yeah the rock bass we, holy mackerel yeah. rock it wouldn't have been bad if they would have been big rock bass but they're all like three inches long yeah. when i when i first pulled that first rock bass out it was like what in tarnation do we have here yeah and yeah, sure well, that's enough. when Ramsey texted me and 
said, uh, I caught a rock bass. And I was like, a rock bass? Yeah, you had was, said that to me. You I was like, like, are like are you Ramsey sh- said he caught a rock bass. I, was like, are you, yeah. I, was, I asked him, are you sure you know what a rock bass is? So Eric I, must have told him because I don't think Ramsey knows what I, a rock I, bass is. I, I didn't realize that they were out there. No, me neither. But, no, if you're if you're in the bait shop and you want to want to pick up a couple jigs, I've kind of turned the rest of these guys onto these custom jigs and spins. A five millimeter. Well, I don't know. Yeah, must be a five millimeter. It's five millimeter custom jigs and spins check eye jig made out of tungsten. Uh, they're cheaper than most of the other t- tungsten jigs in, in their sizes. I personally almost always use a black with the, gold, or with the uh, glow spots on it. Gold has also been my yep. uh, my secondary color throughout the years. Fire Tiger always works pretty good, too, in them. I don't even know if I own a Fire Tiger. I've had luck with that. Okay. So, yeah, and the nice thing about them, too, is they do come in a variety of different sizes. They, I think they start all the way down at 3 or 3.5 millimeter, all the way up to 7 millimeter, you right. know, for bigger ones. For I've got a couple eyes. of the biggies, but I, I very seldom use them just because I normally am targeting panfish, but... Mm-hmm. And walleyes, well, we caught a lot of walleyes on the yep. five millimeter size. I and you I, have turned us all on to it. I think I never used black as a color for ice fishing up until I started fishing with you. You want to know where I got turned on to it? Actually, guy here just east of town, Verlinburg. Yep. I used to deliver Culligan, and me and Eric had been going over to Miller's Bay. We were always using the cheap pink chartreuse orange jigs and he had told us oh i'm having really good luck with black jigs and i'm like black jigs like no way so i I don't remember what bait shop i went to but i had bought a couple custom jigs and spins black jigs and we caught them after that and ever since then that has been my jig if if you look at my jig box I've I've got twenty of those and two of every other color. Can't argue with that success that you've had with it. No, it's it's been good. Yeah. So that trip, I do want to give another shout out to Eric, your brother Eric, for driving the whole Ooh, time out there. I know where and this is going. As anybody that knows that has ever driven across the state of South Dakota in the winter time, you're never gonna get nice roads the whole way. Somewhere in there, you're going to run into crappy roads. On the way out there, we ran into crappy roads. Up there, we ran into crappy roads. And we were going up to Deerfield. They were pretty snow-packed. Coming out of the parking lot at Deerfield, it was we almost went into almost the ditch. Right. Like somebody else had done just previously silly to us. And then coming home. And going down to Pactola. And going Pactola, yeah. When we were going down the hill into the Pactola parking lot, somebody not too long before us... Tested out the guardrail. (laughs) Works. Yep. (laughs) Tested out the guardrail on this side and went over and almost hit the mountain on this side and then got back on the road. Well, he he did a great job. Because on the way out, was it by Mitchell where we saw that car that had spun on the interstate? Did you see somebody died out there? Uh uh-uh. uh. Somebody died on the interstate on Friday after we had been through. It would it was the roads were not good through there. Yep, not oh, that's good. crazy. And then on the way back, when we were coming, we got east of Chamberlain. We there was a lot of black ice on the interstate and I think for a split second we all thought that we were toast. Yeah. Yeah, we with that light trailer, you know, pulling that tall trailer down the interstate and it was windy. I mean, really windy. Yeah, we blew the trailer right out from behind, behind us, behind the truck, and we got pretty squirrely at about seventy miles an hour, and it got real quiet. Got real quiet. And Eric got her straightened out for us, and we all <laughs> kind of at the same time let out a woo. He was he was shaking up. Uh, we and you know we slowed down after that. Well, we even going fifty. Uh, you know, we, we went 50 miles times. an hour after that just trying to hoof it just to get to Sioux Falls. And there was a couple times yet after that that the trailer would blow out from behind us. And, yeah, we had four ice shacks in there, but that that trailer's a sail. Yeah. There's not there's not much weight back there, so it can get blown around pretty easily. Once again, would have been nice to have the four-wheeler. It's where we should have had it. 
so yeah eric thanks for that yeah it's pretty stressful driving around driving the whole weekend like that oh yeah so ramsey talking and behind you oh, it was God kinda, knows what it was kind of nice on sunday when he fell asleep when we left rapid city and slept for quite a ways yeah i think he fell asleep before before we were out of rapid and we had, the, had that big breakfast <laughs> oh hill city cafe we forgot to mention them earlier too that that breakfast was that was really, really good. good and enough for us to eat um one other thing too that we have here is this cold snap toothpick used for taking uh the jigs and hooks out of fish's mouths not only is it great it's all year all year round it's great to use yep it's really nice if you get a any type of fish if they get the they swallow the hook it's way down in there instead of you can't reach your finger down in there to pop it out you can just take this and reach it down in there and it's got a couple prongs there you can either push it out or a lot of times you can grab it and twist it and pull it right out of the fish's mouth i know this summer when we were on vacation there were some people fishing on the dock at the resort and we got back they had a bluegill that had the jig way down in its mouth and they were trying to get it out and they couldn't and they asked if i had a pliers to get it out and i was like i got something even better than a pliers i grabbed this and just reached down in there popped out right away and they're just like whoa i've got so, a pliers on my hip oh 90 percent of the time but what really turned me on to the toothpick is with those pliers you know you go down there you grab the jig head and you're always scuffing off all the paint yeah this that that's a game changer in that in that, that aspect keeps the jig the paint good on the jig right and especially on a finesse bite you know well a big pliers isn't going to get in the mouth of a small fish no. but you know on a finesse bite I, I really think that the paint on your jig you know if, if it's scuffed up and and goofy that can, can make, make the difference, difference yeah. and, and these are cheap you they're know only a couple bucks right i mean if you fish they got a couple different sizes one for smaller panfish and then one for walleyes and bigger game fish that you're after. Definitely go and check one of these out and pick one up. I mean, it clips right onto your bibs or your jacket. It doesn't get in the way. It doesn't take up much room. Right. If you wreck, if you wreck three jigs, you easily got that thing paid for. So, yeah. you know, kind of a no-brainer. That are killing the fish. Definitely. If you plan on releasing it. Definitely. So. Yeah, otherwise, excellent trip. We're kind of in the polar vortex right now. Ooh. Can't really do anything outside without you know, neg freezing. <laughs> negative 20 tonight? Yeah, and the wind chill of down to negative 40, 50 is what they're calling for overnight and then into tomorrow. But the good news is, if your lake has thin ice it, it will won't. have thicker ice tomorrow i wonder how much ice it can like and like on a night like this that it can really build up because i saw over at east okaboji there was some open water on east lake that's another thing to talk about winter games last weekend yeah, and no games. one died yeah, three people went through i think is or three atvs went through that's really per pretty miraculous yeah i, I thought it was going to be i thought the over under was going to be way more than that but. yep I, I had heard that the DNR was maybe going to go out and put up some flags or some little signs by the open water out there on east, kind of warning people. So either either they did and they blew away or... Well, that's for some of them, it's not going to stop them. Right. It's more of a challenge for them then. Because I heard that the one open part, there was, had been people driving across it with their snowmobiles. Shut it down. Oh, you know right. how that goes. It wasn't a big open area. Yep. It was thin ice, you know, how get it going fast, give it the old brap, and yeah. go flying across it. I'm not one for snowmobiles, but I will say that I am guilty of that. I remember a couple, oh, yeah. well, it was probably 15 years back, me and Eric found out that snowmobiles can go across open water, and there in between East Okaboji and, I don't know, is it Minnewashta or whatever up there East to the south? Gar. Yeah, whatever. But we could fly underneath that bridge over the open <laughs> yeah. water, and so we did, and made us feel pretty cool. But yeah, not not something. Dad was dad was fired not impressed. Up. Oh God, <laughs> Bishop Leroy was oh. not impressed with when the Sturman we, boys that day. When we went back and told him what we had done, that wasn't good. wasn't good. <laughs> He's We're a man put, a few words the way it was. <laughs> 
and he just probably got quieter. That was the thing. Yeah. It was like, uh oh. Yeah, you know, you, you can kind of feel the sweat on your back. It's like, oh man, we're toast. Yeah, I don't think if I was Chad Lorith, I'd go buzzing across that open water with that sled of his. Oh yeah, he could do it. Oh yeah, he probably could, knowing him. That so like be a care- challenge, Chad. Yeah, we're challenging right now. We Scott and I are going to come watch from a safe distance. <laughs> You got that nebulous system on there. Your snowmobile will float, and it will be fine if it goes through. You got to find out if it works. Yeah, the only way to test it. So be careful over there. There's still some open spots on East Okaboji. Uh, I haven't heard anything else on any of the other lakes over there. I think the bite the bite slowed down a little bit than what it, compared to what it had. The perch bite seems like it's still going great on Spirit Lake. Yep. Well, it's going to be 42 this Saturday. It's, yeah. I mean. You're going to debate whether to go sunbathing or it's ice fishing. F- you can do both. like a heat wave. Yeah. You might get the lawn chair out there and, yeah, lay out. And 60 degree swing. Sit there and jig right beside it while you get a tan. Yep. Um, all right, well, who do you got for Sunday? Pats or the Rams? You can't not pick. You can't not pick Tom Brady. I'd, it's it's tough to. But, I'm a Miami know, That's Dolphins what I thought fan. last year, too, with the. Eagles versus the Patriots. Uh, being a Miami Dolphins fan, AFC East, you hate Tom Brady, but you know no one thought that they were going to make it this far. I just, yeah, maybe they haven't played a defense quite like, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll pick, I'll pick Tom Brady any day. I, uh, I want the Patriots to win too. Yeah, it doesn't mean. I guess I won't say that. That means I'm going for the Patriots, <laughs> but I'm just picking them. So. Fishing plans, hopefully we can get out this weekend. Yeah, I think we'll get out. I've got Grady this weekend, so hopefully Getting he wants to hit fish. the water somewhere and show me how it's done. And he usually does. Yeah, he's a good little fisherman now. So He's getting there. Yep. He's, he, people better watch out. He, <laughs> he's gonna If he starts out fishing me, I'm not going to take him anymore. <laughs> I'll be busy on those weekends, or I'll just meet you guys at the lake. Yeah. Nope. Oh. All right. See ya. Thank you.